One of BC Hydro's strategic objectives is to uh, foster economic development opportunities across BC. So I'm really thrilled to be here today, and I'm hoping to accomplish two things. One is to help you guys to win some of the upcoming work, and the other is to meet as many of you as possible to find out about the capabilities and capacities of northern BC firms. So I'm sure most of you probably know who BC Hydro are, but just quickly, we're a crown corporation wholly owned by the province of British Columbia. Our purpose is to deliver low-cost, reliable electricity for generations. And as I'm fairly new to BC Hydro, I think I can say we do this quite well. We serve 1.9 million customers, or 95% of the province's population, and serve the residential, commercial, and industrial sectors. So this slide gives you some statistics about our infrastructure and gives you an idea about some of the potential opportunities because we generate, transmit, and distribute electricity, and we own the infrastructure that's required to do this. And many of BC Hydro's assets uh, were built over 40 years ago, before 1970, and they're re reaching the age at which refurbishments are required to safely and reliably continue to operate them. In addition, BC's electricity demand is expected to increase significantly over the next 20 years due to economic expansion, population growth, and the increased use of or conversion to electricity. And our system needs to grow to meet those needs. So both of these factors, the, the age and current assets and the need to increase the capacity or expand or construct new, mean that there's gonna be upcoming opportunities for contractors and suppliers. Now, the caveat to this slide is that the best way to find out about procurement opportunities with BC Hydro is to go to BC Bid. Um, I'd encourage all of you to become familiar with that if you're not already. All of our procurements, over $100,000, are posted on BC Bid. But this is, I've just included on here um, a sample of some of our upcoming opportunities to give you an idea. We've got several upgrade projects planned to be undertaken at the GM Shrum Generating Station, which is located on the Peace River near Hudson's Hope. There's several boat ramps planned to be constructed on the Williston Reservoir. Nine dewatering wells and a discharge pumping system are to be built in the town of Peace River. There's also the DCAT project, which is the Dawson Creek Chetwind Area Transmission Project, and that, the map on the uh, slide there shows um, an overview of that project. It actually comprises a new substation, two new transmission circuits, and the expansion of two existing substations. So we're expecting to issue RFPs and RFTs for the, for the DCAT project between this summer and next for various activities, including site preparation and clearing, uh, transmission line tower foundation and installation, and substation construction and expansion. Last but not least there, we have the Site C Clean Energy Project, and that's what I'm responsible for, so I'm gonna s talk about that for the remainder of this presentation. So just to give you a bit of context to the Site C project, Site C is a proposed third dam um, and hydroelectric generating station on the Peace River. It will be located seven kilometers southwest of Fort St. John, and as the third dam on the Peace River, it leverages the existing storage upstream in the Williston Reservoir. It's currently undergoing an independent environmental assessment, and should the project receive environmental certification, we would anticipate starting construction on the project in the fall of next year. So what that means, and why I'm talking to you today, is because we'll be beginning the procurement process for some components of the project within the next 12 months. And we have actually started uh, procurement for some components with long lead times, for instance, the turbines. The tur we've got, got a procurement underway for turbine model development and testing already. So any such procurements would obviously be subject to receiving environmental certification and other required permits and authorizations. Now, I've just included this slide to, to give you an idea of our five uh, procurement objectives that we are working to achieve with the project. We spent quite a lot of time considering different procurement alternatives um, in order to determine how we can best meet these objectives. And the result is that uh, we've come up with a a procurement approach that includes many different contracts. So one of those alternatives, procurement alternatives we considered was a, you know, a single large contract. It may, gets rid of a lot of interfaces, but we decided against that. We've got um, contracts of different sizes with different models, um, and we believe this is gonna best meet our procurement objectives, including providing opportunities for businesses of all sizes, small, medium, and large, and providing opportunities for regional and Aboriginal businesses. So I'm just gonna summarize the procurement of the project for you. Um, and I'm gonna summarize it in terms of three components of work. First of all, on your left there, the dam site components. 
These are components of the project located at the dam site itself. Um, it includes a one kilometer long earthfill dam, a roller compacted concrete buttress, diversion works, generating station, spillways, turbines, generators. And the procurement of all of these contracts is, of these components is really driven by the interfaces between them. Um, they're, they're closely located in geography. There's a lot of materials that need to be excavated and reused. Um, and because of this, um, the, the design and the construction of these components needs to be integrated. And so that led us to grouping the majority of the work at the dam site into three fairly large contracts. The main civil works contract, generating station and spillways contract, and a turbines and generators contract. Next up, we have the off-site components. Um, these are generally away from the dam site, and, and the kind of the scope of this project leads some people to call it, it's really a program of projects because we, as well as those dam site components, we've also got clearing of the area that would be inundated by the reservoir. We're expecting to, um, we've got a detailed uh, clearing plan, and we're expecting that the, the clearing would give rise to approximately 1.4 million meters cubed of merchantable timber and 1.2 million meters cubed of non-merchantable timber. We actually recently issued a request for supplier qualifications looking for um, ways to utilize the non-merchantable timber. But the clearing itself, we're gonna procure through many contracts. We're gonna size those contracts to the um, market capacity, and each contract would cover all of the clearing activities associated with a specific plot of land. We then got uh, the realignment of several sections of Highway 29, approximately 30 kilometers in total, um, which runs alongside the proposed reservoir, as well as the construction or upgrade of several public access roads. Um, there's a transmission line component to the project, which includes the installation of two new 77 kilometer long lines along an existing right of way. So that's gonna include the, the sequencing of the decommissioning of the existing 138 kilovolt lines and the construction of a substation at the site so that we can serve Fort St. John and Taylor directly from the generating station. So these off-site component contracts are generally medium-sized contracts, and they're likely to be either design, bid, build, or tender packages. Finally, on this slide, we've got the early works components. And these are the first contracts you're likely to see hitting BC bid, because they're the components of the project that we need to start on soon after we receive certification in order to maintain the project schedule. The early works uh, include a range of contract sizes and types of work, but mainly comprise early clearing around the actual dam site itself, early civil works, which would be site preparation, grading, leveling, and work accommodation and site services. So really across the project, we see regional businesses having a potential competitive advantage over businesses located further from the project area because uh, regional businesses have knowledge of the area, lower mobilization times, and uh, lower mobilization costs. And we see this as an advantage across the project, but particularly um, one of significance for the early works components. So in addition to those major contracts that I've just outlined, um, there's gonna be numerous smaller and medium comp um, supporting activities requiring those major activities, supporting those major activities. So this list provides an indication. It's not exhaustive, there's many more activities that are gonna be required, but to give you an idea, um, there's gonna be safety, first aid, and security that we need at site and at those off-site components. There's going to be site road maintenance and snow clearing needed. There's gonna be transportation and shuttle services. Um, there'll be some remote work or accommodation requirements. And the procurement of these activities hasn't been defined in detail, but it's likely that some will be directly procured by BC Hydro and others will be procured through subcontracts. So in terms of the procurement process, um, it will be specific to each contract. The procurement process will be designed for each contract uh, size and scope of work. But just to give you an indication, this shows the steps of a typical procurement. Um, the first step you see there is a pre-qualification stage, which aims to establish a set of contractors who have the necessary experience and skills to undertake the scope of work being procured. This step may not be required for every contract, but it's likely to be used for the larger packages and for that clearing um, work. As I said, it's gonna be parceled into a, a, um, many plots of land to be cleared, so we're likely going to do a single qualification stage and then call upon those qualified contractors as each lot needs to be cleared. 
So after the qualification stage, the next steps would be developing the contract documents. That would um, be a step we would undertake. We would then solicit responses from the market, either through a request for proposals or tender process as appropriate, and then evaluate the responses and award a contract. And throughout this process, we anticipate talking to the market with more detailed information at each stage. Finally, how can you stay informed about the project and business opportunities? Well, first of all, I'd encourage you to sign up for the Site C Business Directory. I know we've heard about some business directories already tonight, but um, it's really very easy to sign up for it. You can go to our website, and it'll provide you with uh, benefits in the form that we will notify you of uh, any relevant business opportunities as they arise. We're also sharing the Site C Business Directory right now with contractors who are undertaking planning work and we plan to share it with successful proponents once we get into the construction uh, procurement. Um, we may also share the, the uh, information in the directory with other BC Hydro projects as well. So the other benefit to the business directory is the best way to stay informed about our future events that we are um, planning to inform the business community. So amongst those, uh, we've held two business information sessions in Prince George the last two years, and we may well hold more in the future, and you'd get a notification of that if you're in the directory. We're also planning on uh, facilitating um, uh, connections between regional businesses and regional and international businesses. Um, and uh, so we're, we're considering holding networking sessions, or some people call them speed dating sessions for contractors. Um, and uh, we're, we'll be holding proponent information meetings for some of the contracts once they get into further into procurement. Then I'd also encourage you to get to know BC Bid if you don't already. Um, as I mentioned, all of our contracts over $100,000 are, are listed on BC Bid. Um, it's a government website for, for public sector procurement, so it's not just BC Hydro who are on it. You'll get information about a huge number of opportunities from that. And finally, there's an awful lot of information on our website. Um, there's further details about the procurement approach, there's further details about the studies, and it'll always contain the most up-to-date information about where we're at in the project.